So many of you guys seem to enjoy the videos where I get fake games online and we check them out here. Sometimes they're obviously fake, other times they are counterfeit attempting to pass off as the real thing. Well, today I have three obviously fake games to check out. However, there is one that I was very curious about. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button, subscribe if you're new here, and we're gonna start with today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Factor. With summer coming to a close, the busy fall season is fast approaching. Factor makes it easy to stick to your nutritional goals without the stress of planning out meals and spending hours in the kitchen. With Factor, there's no prep or mess. You simply put together your favorite meals from the large variety of options like keto, calorie, smart, chef's choice, vegan options, and more. Calories and ingredients are labeled clearly on the back, making it easy to track as well. The freshly prepared meals arrive straight to your doorstep, meaning you can cut out some of the trips to the grocery store. The meals come together fast with just a few minutes in the microwave. I like to take a factor meal with me to the office during the day to make sticking to my nutritional goals easy and being able to have food ready in a few minutes makes getting on with my day a lot easier. Head to go.factor75.com slash spawn wave 130 and use code spawn wave 130 to get $130 off across six boxes. That's go.factor75.com slash spawn wave 130 and use code spawn wave 130 to get $130 off across six boxes. Thanks once again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. So there's also a bit of a bonus since I was looking around, I realized I didn't have an original Nintendo that was HDMI enabled to capture footage from. I ordered this $30 clone system for the original Nintendo that does have HDMI out. It's, uh, what is this called? The 8-bit HD video game system from Gamers Tech. So uh, I'm sure that'll go over well just looking at the controller layout here. Anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, let's start though with the first game, and that is another one of those compilation cartridges. And we see these for the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, the Genesis. Uh, quite a bit, but I wanted to grab this one. It, it does say it has a built-in CIC chip for original NTSC and PAL NES consoles, so we'll see if it works on this clone system over here, but it's always interesting when they promise you hundreds of games on one cartridge. This one in particular, uh, 852 in one, and we can see right through it, so it doesn't really need to open it, but uh, you can see how small the cartridge is here. It does have a battery holder though. I, I guess that's nice. If the battery dies, you can just pop a new one in without having to solder it. I really like the low resolution label. Like you can't even read any of this text right here. I, I think they're attempting to show off the main menu for, for the game when you first turn it on and you can't read any of this text. Uh, it's just a really, I mean, just poorly done label all the way around. It, it is one of those, situations where it looks like they printed it out on just regular paper and tried to put like some thin laminate over it and then just glued it down with a glue stick because it's already peeling up on the side here. Well, I got the system from Amazon all hooked up here with the cartridge in and now on and it came right up on the monitor here through HDMI. The system at least works, so there you go. It, it's not the the highest quality feeling system and the controllers are pretty bad. So for just in the overall ergonomics of it, but technically it is functional. So there you go. But let's see, it, it does say uh, forever games of NES. So I hit, okay, there's 405 games here. It says hit select to swap cartridge. So I press that. Oh, interesting. So they have, okay, so they have technically two cartridges built into this. I assume the reason they have that is because like the NES can't detect like larger sizes than that, than like the max that they have here. So they basically then switch to the other 447 games. They, they do indeed have 800 games then here. So I see Super Mario here, which I assume if I start this up, it, what is, what is going on here? I'm kind of running around in this square. I don't even, I guess those are okay. So there are trees around, there's a dog. Am I supposed to get to this person here? Okay, she can like go diagonal. That's not fair. I can't go diagonal. This this is what the final castle in Mario should have been. I ran into her and nothing happened. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I've, I've run into her a few times. No, I don't even know what game this is. Oh, Super Maruo. Got it, okay. If I hit select again, 
now I have games that I a bit more recognizable. Hey, look, there's, uh, there's WWF WrestleMania. Super Mario Bros. 1, there's Lost Levels. I just see Pitfall. Maybe they just have it under Mario. Uh, maybe just have it under like Mario 3. Let's let's go. Let's just go down here. We're gonna go to Super Mario Bros. 1. Make sure everything's on the up and up. Okay, this looks right. There you go. This does look like uh, this does look like Mario. So at least they have this side right. It's not super Maruo. I don't see Star Tropics on here. So that's kind of a that's a point off. They have both Skater Die. They even have Prince of Persia. Wow, really? I'm surprised they have that one. Let's see how many Mega Man games. I, I assume they have all the Mega Man games, right? Let's see. They have one and two. They, they okay. Two's good, obviously, but like three or four, like uh, yeah. So a bit of a bit of a minus there too, not having more than the, the two Mega Man games. Even like Mega Man Six was really fun. Oh look, they even have Dragon Power. Dragon Power was the the game that was on the Nintendo that's. Basically Dragon Ball, but they brought it on over under the name Dragon Power and they changed a couple of things in the game to make sense like I guess for American audience what they thought we wanted like I think at, at one point uh, Oolong or Master Roshi, someone like wishes, I think it was Oolong, wishes for a pair of underwear and instead what they did in the game was they they flipped it upside down and said that he like wished for a sandwich so they had to Figure out the uh, some some little tricks there to kind of kind of hide it and make it, I guess, a, appropriate for Western audiences. I I don't know. It's not exactly a game you'd look at and say, yeah, that's definitely Dragon Ball. But it's an interesting, I guess, it's an interesting piece for the collection if you ever come across it. But I will say overall, this is probably one of the better multi cart games I've seen so far, just from the selection of titles that are on there, minus the label and the presentation, and the fact that it probably wouldn't stand up too well in the courtroom. Next up, we have the game that I'm very curious about. Uh, while we have the NES hooked up, I figured we would take a look, and that is the Pokemon Special Pikachu Edition for the original Nintendo. I've seen this floating around out there for years now, and I've been very curious exactly what it was. It says it's the yellow version, has the, oh, just a terrible looking Nintendo seal of quality, which is ironic. Uh, but this is the pre-installed Pokemon Special Pikachu Edition. I, I don't know what that means exactly. I like that they put in the yellow cartridge to try to mimic the Game Boy cartridge, of course, also being yellow, but I don't know, I guess we'll, Plug it in and see what we get. Oh, they have like a nice little intro screen here, I guess, of uh, of Ash or your your character in the game, kind of running through the field. Let's just let's just skip that. Look at that Pokemon Yellow version. Is this just the is this just the Game Boy version on the Nintendo or the NES system? Oh, look at that. Yeah, that that, that kind of looks like the the Game Boy version. This is. Very unexpected. I, I thought this was gonna be some weird looking like side-scrolling 2D game or something. Well, look at that. We have the the tall grass. You got you go behind the grass and everything. You're pretty quick right here when I'm just running through the fields. So I go through the beginning here. I mean, it's it's just basically the same. Gary's like, I'm gonna take that Pokemon off the table. Just gave me Pikachu. I mean, it does. It's not exactly the same as yellow on the Game Boy. Looks like there was some work done to put this together. I am very curious at like the backstory of this game because we never like had Pokemon on a home console until technically with the Switch. And even that, people still debate, is that a home console, is that a handheld or anything? And I was always curious what kind of effect a full like uh, Pokemon release on something like the GameCube would have had or even the Nintendo 64. We had Pokemon Stadium. We had, uh, we had we had Pokemon Stadium Coliseum, Stadium 2, uh, Pokemon XD, but they never said, okay, we're gonna take Pokemon Emerald. That's just a, a GameCube game. It's not going to the Game Boy Advance. Just something there. I would have been curious to see how that could have affected sales for uh, their home console at the time. But I, I gotta admit, I'm a little yes. Even like the menus different. Let's see, there's Ash. I mean, they have all the badges right there to go through. I like how there's no jumping animation. That's supposed to be like a ledge that you, you jump down. You just walk over it. I mean, some of the Pokemon sprites look better here than they do on the Game Boy. I mean, 
Back like red, blue, and yellow, you look at those now, and some of the Pokemon there just look very weird. But here, like, I mean, Rattata's like in full color there, purple and white, and looks a bit better. Even has like animation when I ran into it just now. I, I almost wonder if this would be, if they do everything correctly start to finish, if it ends up being a better experience. I mean, it's not gonna be better, but like a, a comparable experience. I, I don't know. If you've played through this version of the game, for whatever reason on Nintendo, let me know if it actually is complete one and if it's a decent playthrough. Because obviously I'm not going to play all the way through the game here now. Because I'm very surprised at what this game ended up being and I'm kind of curious how it uh, how it is all the way through. A quick look inside and I mean this looks like a, wow that looks like a, like a new PCB new board that was put together here. You can see the flash memory or the flash chip here that was soldered down. It still kind of has some uh, some remnants of the flux from when they were soldering it. Yeah, this looks like a board that was put together with uh, this game in mind. It, it reminds me of the multi-cart game when we looked through the plastic there and saw that. This looks very, very similar to that board. Also, I did check this this chip right here which would have the ROM on it. And they're using a pretty large chip. It's a, it's, it's a 64 megabit, so that'd be an eight megabyte chip. And I, I don't know if that's because the ROM itself is pretty large or because these are more readily available and maybe cheaper, but this seems like the kind of chip they would use for that, uh, that multi-cart game. I'm a little surprised to see them use it completely just for this one game. And our last game, we are going to the Nintendo 64 because I had to get this. It popped up for a little bit, disappeared, popped up again. Dragon Ball Kart. I'd like to think that this is kind of based on the episode, the filler episode where Goku and Piccolo learn how to drive, but we'll see. I assume this is just a Mario Kart modification that just inserts a bunch of Dragon Ball Z characters, but like, it does have the expansion pack right here. I guess they're taking advantage of that one. But they, we have Goku, Piccolo, Vegeta's back there. There's Hercular, Mr. Satan. So we'll see how this turns out. I do like the red though. Like when these fake games at least use different cartridges and designs, that, that, that's a lot of fun because they, they know they're not trying to be legit. I mean, obviously it's Dragon Ball Kart, but you might as well go to the next level with it and, and do something like this. This red with kind of like the, the sort of like the sparkle accent on it. Okay, here we go. There's a the Nintendo logo and we have Dragon Ball Kart 64 push start button. Okay, let's let's see what we have here. There's a oh, they have GT. Okay, okay. It's kind of like got that the theme like uh Dragon Ball GT. There we go. Let's just let's just let's just take a look at the the characters. Oh, what is going on with their faces? Oh, they're trying to animate them like saying stuff or moving and it just, it looks so, what is it? A cell is like giving people the eyebrow. It only does it when I move. Like if I don't move, oh, nope, okay. Wow, that is kind of, kind of terrifying actually. I don't know, who should I be? I, I feel like Goku is the obvious choice. I kind of want to be Beerus. No, you know what, Let, let's, Let's let's start with uh, let's just start with Vegeta. Let's do that. There's the red ribbon cup, the Majin cup, the say uh, it's probably the Saiyan cup, the Ginyu cup. All right, let's start with the the ribbon cup. I'm mostly curious what the character looks like in game. We'll probably have a bunch of other characters around. Yep. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, they have Master Roshi in there. It's more a cosmetic modification. It's not necessarily change. Although I guess there are power ups and stuff. I wonder if they give you like a Kamea Wave or a Final Flash. They did, they changed those up. A Dragon Ball, what's that do? Oh, it's the star, okay. Got the Sensu Bean, what's that do? Oh, it's just the boost. See, I like that they at least tried to come up with with uh, with different ideas for that. Like, what, what do these power-ups do? We're not just gonna have Vegeta use like a, uh, a red shell. We're gonna change it up and it'll be like a Kamea Wave or a Final Flash. Although I haven't gotten any of those yet. I need to pick one up to see what it looks like. Okay, I have the Kamea wave. Let's see, we'll take out Free. Oh, we'll take out Frieza. Mm, oh, it is, it, it's still, it's like a little Kamea blast. It's like the little blue ball that you shoot at people. Okay, that's, see, that's pretty funny. Can I get the other one? Okay, I got another, okay. I'm gonna shoot it backwards. You can shoot it backwards, all right. 
So this is, this, oh, there we go. I got three of them. Oh, they put like a trail, okay. So like I said, it's not like reinventing the game necessarily for uh, the, the tracks. Or, or the gameplay, really. It's a cosmetic modification. And it's technically still Mario Kart at the end of the day. It controls the same. You get power-ups racing around. There's battle mode. They just changed it up to be more Dragon Ball-centric. And we'll take a quick look inside this cartridge as well. I assume it's gonna be the same thing we've seen with the other ones where, yeah, so basically we're just starting to see new boards that are being designed for these modifications to drop on there. The nice thing is like with N64 for this, you don't really need a battery or any of that. So you just have your flash chips on one side. And that's, I guess that is the nice thing is these aren't reused boards necessarily from other Nintendo 64 games. So you're not necessarily wiping one game out to make uh, an obvious uh, modification, an obvious reproduction cart. And the pins would be new then. So. I, I don't know if I would go out spending money on a lot of these games because they're they're obvious ROM hacks that are just being put on cartridges. Instead, you could go out, look for the ROM hack, and just sort of try it out on your PC and see what you think. And guys, that's gonna do it here for more fake Nintendo games that I found on eBay. The Pokemon NES game was a bit interesting. It surprised me, certainly. I'm curious about the backstory for this one, so if you have more knowledge of it, let me know in the comments. But Dragon Ball Kart was actually a lot of fun too. Even though it was just like a cosmetic modification, it was just, it was fun to see the Dragon Ball characters kind of driving around in Mario Kart. But let me know what you thought of these and which one was your favorite. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.